Welcome back to Short Times. Today I'm going to walk you through the film Last Night in Soho from 2021, directed by Edgar Wright. So, here we go. The film begins with Eloise. Ellie is dancing in her room. She is a young fashion designer who lives with her grandmother, Grand Peggy, and has been mourning the death of her mother who occasionally comes to Ellie in mirror reflections. Peggy shows Ellie a letter alerting her that she has been accepted to a fashion school in London. Ellie is ecstatic, but Peggy cautions her that there are evil men up there. Ellie takes the train to London, and is met by a local taxi to take her to her hotel. Ellie gets off the taxi after the driver makes disturbing comments to her, so she goes to a shop and waits for the man to depart so she can continue walking to her room. She arrives and runs into her roommate Jocasta. Next day, Ellie goes out with Jocasta to a party with her pals, where it is revealed that Ellie's mother committed suicide after struggling with mental illness. While in the ladies' room, Ellie overhears Jocasta gossiping about her to the other girls. Ellie exits the pub and walks back to her room. Meanwhile, noticing an older man smiling at her, Jocasta subsequently brings a guy back to her room to hook up with while Ellie tries to sleep. She steps out of her room and discovers a party going on outside. A young man named John is the lone student who has become her buddy. The next morning, Ellie wakes up late and runs to class where she makes it on time for attendance. Ellie decides to have her own house for peace of mind. She gets a room at a boarding house run by an elderly lady named Miss Collins. She sets ground rules for Ellie and allows her to stay in the upper bedroom. Ellie likes the spot and spends the night there, sleeping all the way under the covers and enjoying the peace and quiet. At the same time, Ellie is getting out of bed, she finds herself in the 1960s. She enters Café de Paris and finds her reflection as another young woman named Sandy. Ellie follows Sandy as though she is an invisible spirit watching everything unfold. Sandy wants to be a singer at the venue, but she gets unwanted attention from a grumpy customer. She is instructed to talk to a man named Jack about becoming a singer. Sandy meets Jack and is taken with him. When the patron makes rude remarks, he begins to leave with her. Jack strikes him in the face and flees with Sandy, kissing her in a phone booth, as is also seen with Ellie. Ellie continues on her journey and comes across Sandy in her bed, but when she tries to touch her, she awakens in the present. Later at school, Ellie becomes inspired to create a design based on what she saw Sandy wearing. Jocasta notes a hickey on Ellie's neck from where Jack had been kissing her. It means Sandy. Ellie goes back to sleep later that night, in the hopes of waking up in the 1960s once more. She discovers herself as Sandy and Jack become closer, and he brings Sandy to see the owner of a different venue, the Rialto, so that she can perform the song downtown for him. The males observe that she can obviously sing. We're back in the present. Ellie dyes her hair blonde like Sandy's and works on her dress design, which her teacher seems to admire but Jocasta mocks her out of spite. Following evening, Ellie sees the current day version of the venue where she witnessed Sandy perform. She then goes to a bar to look for work. As she walks back to her room, the old man who spotted her the night before, follows her and claims to recognize her because of her hair, but he says he is not looking for her. Ellie is confused and returns to the Rialto and discovers Sandy performing as part of a group of skimpy clad women dancing as support for a woman dressed as a doll. Ellie observes Jack become increasingly harsh as she follows Sandy about, reminding her that she must please certain men, if she wants to make it in the music business. Ellie notices Sandy in the bedroom as a lustful man approaches her, his pants undone. Ellie yells at the man not to touch Sandy, and he appears to hear her. Then Ellie awakens. Later the experience causes Ellie to rip up the pink dress design she originally drew in class. Ellie keeps going to work in school, while keeping her trips to the past hidden from everyone else. In her next visit to the 1960s, she notices that Sandy is getting more cynical and miserable as Jack forces her into prostitution, and she must service a barrage of horrible men, while also growing a drug and alcohol problem. She works by nicknames like Alex, Lexi, and Anna. Only one man does not take advantage of her, and he is polite and charming to her. Sandy talks down about herself, while Ellie tries to get her attention through the mirror. She manages to smash through the glass and grab Sandy, but she wakes up. The following day at school, Ellie appears to be ill, and John notices this. As a result, he invites her to a Halloween party. Later at the party, Jocasta and her friends come upon them and offer them beer. They all start dancing. But in the middle of it, Ellie has visions of the men who took advantage of Sandy, as well as Sandy dancing alone. When John notices Ellie is in poor health, he takes her home. At the home, 
They begin kissing and head to her room for sex. Meanwhile, Ellie looks up and notices Jack beating Sandy in the ceiling mirror. Ellie begins to scream at him to get off her. She then sees Jack stabbing Sandy to death. Miss Collins hears the sound and asks John to leave, because one of her rules is that no male visitors are allowed. She calmly advises Ellie to return to bed. The following day, Ellie apologizes to Miss Collins about what happened. She asks if someone died in her room. But Miss Collins is hesitant. Ellie afterwards goes to the library to search up murders from the 1960s. Meanwhile she starts to see ghostly guys following her around the library, nearly leading her to stab Jocasta in the face with a pair of scissors. John runs after Jocasta to explain things while Ellie leaves in a panic. Later, to report the 1960s murder, she hurries to the police station, now thinking that Jack, the elderly man, killed Sandy and got away with it. But the investigators are clear that she provides zero evidence. Later on that day, Ellie arrives late for work and discovers that the old man is expecting her. She pulls out her phone to try to record a confession from him. But when she mentions Sandy, the man responds, Alex killed Sandy, and that whatever happened to her was her fault. Ellie chases after the man, but he is killed by a car on the street. Ellie's manager instructs someone to dial 911 and identify himself as a retired cop named Lindsay. Ellie recognizes the man as the gentleman who was kind to her and did not sleep with her. And after that, Ellie goes back to her room and decides to see her grandma in the country at her family's home. At the same time, Ms. Collins gives Ellie tea in her mail. One letter is addressed to Ms. Collins, revealing her name to be Alexandra, which is what Sandy told Jack her name was short for. Later, Ms. Collins explains that there was a death in Ellie's room. After facing so much harassment, she chose to end her life as Sandy by stabbing Jack to death. She later avenged herself by murdering all of the men who had abused her. Ms. Collins then explains that she poisoned Ellie's tea and will make it look like a suicide. John then comes looking for Ellie, who regains enough strength to warn John to run. Ms. Collins stabs him while Ellie tries to run upstairs, seeing the younger Sandy attacking her. Meanwhile in downstairs, a fire starts and begins spreading. Ellie shuts herself away in her room where the spirits of Sandy's victims break through the floors and walls, pleading with her to murder Ms. Collins. When Ms. Collins finally breaks in, she sees her reflection as Sandy and understands she has turned into a monster, much like the guys who have tortured her. She attempts to slit her neck, but Ellie gets involved and attempts to help her. Ms. Collins decides to stay in the fire and die while letting Ellie leave. As doctors arrive, Ellie pulls John out of there, and Ms. Collins lets the flames engulf her. Following that, Ellie presents her work in a fashion show with Peggy and John in attendance, to cheer her on along with the rest of the audience. She receives praise from her teacher and the other girls, and she once more notices her mother's smile in the mirror. Ellie notices Sandy's reflection waving at her in the mirror as Peggy and John arrive to congratulate her, and the movie ends.